Hello YouTubers, today I'm going to go through my experiences and partial success in using a Crystal Font 633 LCD with the Raspberry Pi. Um, so I'll start off by giving you a tour of uh, what we've got running here. So the Raspberry Pi itself is running from an ATX power supply, um, just using the 5 volt rails into wherever it is. That's just a normal USB socket removed from mother uh, motherboard. Um, so that gives you a, a very high current uh, power supply and should limit any problems related to that. Uh, what we've also got here are two USB to serial adapters. Uh, if possible, when you're buying these, see if you can find out the, the chipset that's in them. There are two main ones. There's the Prolific PL2303, uh, which does sort of work. And then there's the, also the FTDI, which is this blue one here. Um, I'll demonstrate later, but the FTDI converter will crash your Raspberry Pi, it'll just make it hang straight away uh, as soon as you try to access the screen over serial. Um, so f for this tutorial I'll be using the um, prolific one, which is this black one here, in this case made by Dynamode. Um, you can probably get these at most uh, local computer stores, or certainly on eBay. Right, so I've also got here the Crystal Fonts LCD is a 633 model removed from an old server made by Ultra DNS. Not that it matters, it's a sta standard hardware. And of course the standard uh, Model B Raspberry Pi. So that's all hooked up and we're booted into Fedora Remix 17 in this case. I did try briefly with Raspbian, um, but again the serial issues with the serial drivers were too severe in that. Fedora does seem marginally better. So, I've also made up a little cable to go from a standard 0.1 inch pitch connector to a standard serial plug. So I'll start by connecting this up. The little connector goes on the back of the screen. You probably all know how to set this up anyway. And we'll just plug it into a USB port on the hub. Um, I'm also running a powered USB hub which is probably essential with the Raspberry Pi as it's very limited on what power it can supply over the built-in USB ports. Um, also with keyboard, mouse and the USB to serial adapter you're going to need more than two ports anyway. So let's get started. You've got the screen here that currently says Ultra DNS which is just the branding on that particular screen. Um, I've installed the basic version of uh, Fedora Remix 17. I've also installed updated it using yum update command and I've also installed and configured LCD for Linux. So, let's start off by taking a look at the config file. Hopefully you can read this slightly if you uh, make the video full screen and in high quality. So we have to run this as sudo, under sudo because uh, the permissions on the, the uh, configuration file. The path to the configuration file should be slash etc slash lcd for linux dot com. You type in your password. Uh, sorry, I just typed that wrong. In this case I'm using the nano editor, it's fairly basic and it gives you all the functionality you need. Um, I'm just using a slightly modified version of the, the demo um, LCD for Linux configuration which is available on their website. Um, so I've copied and pasted that from the website and just changed the settings to reflect the screen that I'm using. In my case it's a Crystal Fonts driver and the model set to 633. Uh, the port you should also set to whichever serial port you're using. In my case it's TTY USB 0 and the size of the screen. Um, in this case it's 16 by 2. Most of the other settings are default. Um, it comes with the, the CPU widget configured by default as well. And I've also added a load average uh, widget using the example code on the LCD for Linux website. So you save that under etc slash lcd for linux dot com. That's already saved. So then you run sudo lcd for linux. 
In my case, I use the slash F option on here. That sort of gives us a bit more information about what's going on. You may also notice with the crystal font screens, it says one wire device detection timed out. That's because these screens do also support temperature sensors, which run over the one wire connection on the board. Uh, this particular one doesn't have any connected to it, so hence the error. Um, you will notice that anyway when you run it, but if you can see the little screen down here, that is now showing the name of the CPU and the load average for the PC. Um, so the load at the moment is 0.3, hopefully you can read that too. Um, with regards to the serial issues uh, mentioned earlier, the Raspberry Pi versions of Linux don't seem to like USB serial adapters very much at all. Um, with this particular one, based on the prolific PL2303X chip, um, it does hang after a few minutes or maybe a few hours if, you, if you're lucky it lasts that long. But it gives you a demo, demo of uh, what you can do with it and it lets you have a play around a bit. Um, so in the, at the moment it's actually still going, uh, longer than the last time I tried it actually, which is always good. Um, and to stop the process, just press Control c to terminate the, the LCD for Linux program. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Raspberry Pi versions of Linux don't seem to like USB serial adapters. I'll also show you the FTDI adapter that we've got here and what it does to the system. So I'll start by unplugging all of that. Okay, so that's now connected. You can probably see the light flashing there. Let's stop now. So anyway, the LCD for Linux screen is still up on the on the LCD there. So if we run that last command again, actually just plugging it in this time seems to have uh, frozen the box. So I'll just give that a quick reboot. So that'll take a few seconds to load up. And you will also have to unplug the, any serial adapters if you've got them plugged in, because, well, certainly in with this OS it won't boot up with the USB serial adapters connected. So as you can see, with the prolific uh, USB serial adapter, it does work, although after a few minutes it will hang. Um, sometimes it will go on for slightly longer, sometimes not. Um, if you go on the Raspberry Pi forums, there are a lot of threads around this, and they do mention there is a patch available for the 2303X chip, which is used in this particular controller. Um, but that patch only seems to be on um, SUS OS Linux and I haven't yet worked out how to get it on Fedora. Hopefully in the next uh, few months they'll get the drivers sorted on the Raspbian Linux and Fedora. That would be nice if they can get all the, the USB to serial adapters working. Uh, also another option you could try, which are available on eBay, is the GPIO to serial converters. Uh, they just plug on the top of the board and you can plug any serial device straight into it. Um, at the moment I don't want to have one of those to hand so I'm just using the USB option for now. But I will be uh, obtaining one of those at a later date. So we're at the desktop again now. Just load up terminal. So if I now plug in the USB to serial adapter Remember this is the FTDI one, and this part of the video is just to demonstrate what it does basically. In this case, as soon as plugging it in, it has frozen up the Raspberry Pi. So, stay away from FTDI, and if you're buying a USB serial adapter on eBay, see if the seller can tell you which chip is in that controller. And stay away from FTDI for now, hopefully there'll be a fix for that at a later date. 
Anyway, that's it for now. Hopefully I'll have more Raspberry Pi videos coming in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye.